Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode in my Tailwind CSS mini-series. Now in this video um, I'm going to basically go over what Tailwind CSS is and we will be setting up our development environment. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the explanation. So Tailwind CSS is what's called a CSS framework or it's basically you know something that we can use that makes CSS easier to write either by adding you know classes for us that we can you know, pre-built classes that maybe do some stuff for us, or some CSS frameworks will add entire components. So they'll add like a class you can add like for shadows. You can make shadows easily, or you can make a nav bar easily just by creating a nav uh, element and putting a nav class. Like CSS frameworks sometimes will either write a bunch of CSS for you, or they will make CSS easier to write on your part. Um, and Tailwind is kind of the latter of the two. Uh, it makes it adds a bunch of kind of micro classes that lets us uh, quickly set up cool looking websites. So, like I said, we are going to basically be um, setting up our development environment and then doing a basic Tailwind kind of setup as well. So the first step, of course, is setting up VS Code, and as always, I will have chapters in this video, so you can skip past this if you would like. But to go ahead and start, we're just going to search up VS Code, go to the Download tab, and then hit whatever you know operating system you need Windows Linux uh, Mac I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that because I don't need it um, and then once you run it it will uh, install the application and when you open up the application it'll look something like this now to go ahead and get started from here you want to hit file open folder and then find the folder for the code that you want to store basically so you can just create any sort of folder on your desktop or on um, anything really and just open up that folder, that way you can hold your code there. Now once you are done um, installing VS Code and opening your folder, you want to install some extensions. Um, and extensions basically add some functionality to VS Code uh, that you know wasn't there previously because you know again VS Code is very basic. It's a, basically a text editor when you download it, but as you add extensions it'll become more and more powerful. So we're going to go ahead and click this icon with the three squares and the one square sticking out here. And then we're going to search HTML, CSS, support. And then, of course, you click on here. Uh, it's this one by ECMEL. And there will be this green install button like that, uh, except I've already installed it for this one. So go ahead and click that green install button for HTML and CSS support. And then you want to search for live server by root week day right here. Um, and there, again, there will be that green install button to go ahead and get that working. And then finally, we want auto rename tag which, um, you know, this one is, again, you can do this one, you can do this one, really anything works. Just hit the green install button and we should all be set up there. So pretty much once you install all the extensions, you might need to do a quick reload, in which case um, I believe you can say, um, uh, you can do a control shift P or command shift P and then say reload and then it'll say developer reload window, or you can do a control R actually in, in this whole thing. So if you uh, do just a reload like this, control shift P and then search reload window, it will go ahead and reload and you should be all set from there. Now, once you're done with that, go ahead and uh, open up the folder where you are planning to store your code and then go ahead and click this little new file button that I'm circling around here, click on that and then type in index.html. Now, once you're in this index.html, um, again, I am assuming that you have basic HTML knowledge for all of my CSS mini series. If you do not, you can check out my Introduction to Web Development tutorial series here on my channel. Um, and I'll probably link up a card in the top right. So, to go ahead and get started, we're just going to type an exclamation point to set up a kind of template boilerplate HTML code. Um, and then inside the body, we are going to just create an H1 Hello World just to make sure we're all working here. And once we have that, go ahead and click the Go Live button in the bottom, which is that live server extension that we installed. And that just lets us see our website here. So we have the Hello World. Um, now, again, this is just basic HTML. And this is not quite Tailwind yet. But we will now be using Tailwind. So to actually use Tailwind, you're going to want to go to Google and search in Tailwind um, like this. and or, or it could be Tailwind CSS, either one. Uh, whoops, not really, CSS. Um, and it'll just be this tailwindcss.com. Um, and this is kind of the thing we're going to use. Uh, normally, if you are using this, 
uh, you will install it with an NPM install Tailwind CSS. And if you don't know what that means, um, I recommend you search up a basic Node.js, N-O-D-E-J-S tutorial, figure out what NPM is. But um, for now, we're actually just going to use the CDN version, um, which just means that just search up Tailwind CSS CDN. Uh, and then it should say using Tailwind CSS v, uh, via CDN, or you can go to the installation page and then uh, find the CDN uh, section, which should be somewhere here. Um, let me find it. Right here. So it says using Tailwind via CDN. Of course, there's some limitations that comes with this, but using what's called the CDN lets us get started right away. Um, versus doing all of these steps if you wanted to use NPM. So again, we're just going to, so you can't customize the default theme, you can't use directives, you can't enable additional variants, you can't do third-party plugins, like there's a bunch of stuff that you can't do. But again, this is just an introduction tutorial. We don't necessarily need to do any of this. Um, and if you are looking for a more intermediate tutorial, I might be uh, looking to create that in the future. But again, so just come to this page using Tailwind via CDN and then just grab this link here. Uh, and paste it, I believe, right there should be fine, um, just at the bottom of your head. And then, of course, we are going to have to link another, um, or, you know, actually, we won't. Never mind. So just add that link here for the Tailwind CSS. And by adding that, we have Tailwind CSS installed. Um, now, the first kind of tutorial that we're going to have, um, and I think I messed something up. Hold on. Um, I think I might have messed up the placement. Or no, that's just the way Tailwind works, right? Yeah. Um, OK. So actually, yeah, you already noticed the change. So I'm going to go ahead and un I'm going to remove that. This is what an H1 looks like by default. But as soon as we add Tailwind, it makes it look like that. So already we see a difference. Um, now, this is not necessarily a good difference, but uh, this is just the way Tailwind is working. So uh, to kind of get a feel as to how to use this, uh, you can come to their website here, Tailwind CSS, and then you can click on this documentation button in the top right. And once you're here, uh, you can read the docs and kind of figure out how to do everything um, by, by reading through these sections. Um, and again, if you go to this documentation page, there's a bunch of stuff that they have. And I'm gonna use the search feature, and I will search for background color right here. So you can search for ground, background, and then there's background color. And you can see all of the documentation, which documentation basically means it explains how to use Tailwind. Uh, or documentation for anything explains how to use that code. And in this case, it is Tailwind. So we can already see there's some classes that we can add. For example, um, let's just say we want to have a background black. So we can just say bg-black. So I'm going to add a class to our h1, bg-black. And notice right there, we just get a black background on the text. Let's try bg-blue. And um, we broke something. Oh, I didn't save it. Uh, oh, right. Um, so yeah, bg-blue does not work. And the reason for that being is the way we use bg in uh, Tailwind is you can use any color, bg blue, green, yellow. There's a bunch of different ones. But then there's this little number that comes afterwards. And that is the shade of the color. So I'm going to put a 100. And you'll notice when I put bg blue 100, it's very light blue. And whoops, as I increase this number, 200, 300, 400, 500, notice it's getting darker on the page, 600, 700, and it goes all the way up to 900, which is the darkest color. Um, so this is basically the kind of level of control we have, is we can say BG and then any color, like let's say yellow, um, and then that's a dark, dark yellow. But if we put it like a 400, we'll get like a lighter yellow. We can use green, you know. And basically, this is the premise of what Tailwind CSS is all about. It's about adding these what are called micro classes. So we just added this simple class, and it added a, um, it added a style to our H1. Um, and there are many, many, many different classes within Tailwind that we can add to our stuff and combine them in, in conjunction. They can make some really cool looking styles. So yeah, basically, that is the premise of everything Tailwind has to offer. So uh, again, that's the BG property, and I will be linking the, both the Tailwind site and the documentation page um, in the description down below if you want to go ahead and check those out. So that was all I had to show for today. If you want to see this series as it kind of develops, I recommend checking out the playlist, which is linked in the description, 
where I will be uploading daily. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to the bell icon for notifications whenever I post new videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.